Hey guys, it's Mikey Chan. This is a story that a lot of you have sent me. Well, let me just tell you about it first. In the Republic of Broyatsia in Siberia, at the Avoginsky Datsun Temple, lies the mummified remains of Lama Itigilov, which is well known around the world because of the lifelike state of his dead body, which reportedly has not been subject to macroscopic decay since his death 79 years ago. But death is a relative word because many believe that the Lama is not dead and is actually still alive but in a deep meditative state. And I know this already sounds really strange to a lot of you, so let me explain. There is a belief in Buddhism that monks who have been cultivating for a long time may ru ding or enter into a deep meditative state where they do not need food or water, and when they wake up from the state, they would have reached enlightenment. This was said to have been the case with Bodhidharma, the founder of Shaolin Temple Martial Arts, who was known for going inside a cave in Wuru Mountain near the Shaolin Temple. And inside the cave, he sat facing a wall for nine years until reaching enlightenment. It's said that he sat for so long, grass started growing from his body and his shadow was forever imprinted onto the stone wall. Also, I don't know if you guys remember, but last year I did a report on this channel about the discovery of the mummified body of a monk discovered in Mongolia. When he was found, many Buddhism practitioners, including the Dalai Lama, has said that he was not in fact dead, but in a deep meditative state. And apparently that's what people believe is happening with Lama Itigilov and probably why why some also claim that the Lama is moving around within the temple where his body is kept. According to the Siberian Times, Lama Damba Ayushev, the current head of the Buddhist traditional Sangha, has claimed that there are two video images which shows Lama Itigilov moving around inside the Ivojinsky Datsun Temple. Lama Ayushev insists that he is completely serious, saying, I see a figure of a man on the shot, as you do, and I know precisely there could not be anyone in the palace at this time. Time. Lama Itigilov supposedly died in 1972 while he was meditating and he requested that he was to be buried sitting in the lotus position. But what's really strange was that when his remains were examined in 1955 and again in 1973, the monks were astonished to find no signs of decay. In September of 2002, his body was once again exhumed, but this time with Buddhist leaders and scientists present. And they were really surprised to find that the remains were found to be in a condition of someone who had just died 36 hours ago with muscle tissues, joints, and even the skin intact. Now, I do believe that people can meditate for a long period of time, maybe even years without food or water. I mean, the case of Bodhidharma, if that's true, is pretty incredible. And how Lama Itigilov is able to not decay just, just boggles my mind. But these photos, I, I don't know. I mean, the first one, it does look like there's a monk standing there, but it also looks like the monk seem to be dressed in some sort of uh, military uniform uniform or camouflage and seem to be carrying bags. I know people have said that no one was supposed to be there at that time and I don't know why somebody who looks like a soldier would be there with what kind of looks like takeout food. And in the second image, I, I really can't tell what that is. I mean, is the Lama just wandering around stretching himself out after decades of sitting in the lotus position? If you guys ever sat in the lotus position, that thing is painful. Now, if you sat in that position for decades, you need to walk around and stretch out a little bit. So I don't know if that's the case where this is a night at the museum situation. I also don't understand why there's not clearer images, why there's not a video clip of this, because it seems like these images were taken from a surveillance camera. So those are all question marks to me, but let me know what you guys think. Next up, do you guys remember uh, a software called the Dragon Naturally Speaking? Is that thing still around? I actually got one of those when I was in college and they were really, really expensive. I think I spent over a hundred dollars for them because I was so sick of actually typing. But I remember after buying that software, it was even more stressful trying to get it to work because his comprehension was worse than Surrey's. Anyway, I have always thought that. Wouldn't it be great if I could just think about whatever I want to type and it magically appears. Well, that technology may be in developments right now. According to Frontiers in Human Neuroscience, scientists are already decoding speech from signals generated in our brains when we speak or listen to someone talking. There are a variety of technologies out there to accomplish this, but the method that stood out most is called electrocorticography. This technique uses a brain-to-text system demonstrated on epilepsy patients who already had electrode grids implanted for treatment 
treatment for their condition. Patients read out texts presented on a screen in front of them while their brain activity was recorded. When the researchers included language and dictionary models in their algorithm, they were able to decode neural signals to text with a high degree of accuracy. And finally, you may have a superpower, but don't even know it yet. You might be a super recognizer. I'm serious, that's that's what they're calling it. A super recognizer is basically what it sounds like, someone who is really good at recognizing people. They may remember people they haven't seen in years or have changed in appearance or someone they have only met briefly. And if you are a super recognizer, then you are in high demand, especially in the police force where you are needed to help match faces captured on surveillance cameras, scan crowds for possible troublemakers or criminals, or even help with victim identification. But you know what guys, I'll tell you right now, I, I do not have this ability. I have the opposite of this ability. I'm a super unrecognizer. I'm not even kidding about that. It's bad to the point where, let's say I'm sitting across from someone on a train and let's say that particular person murdered somebody and then, and then ran away. And literally one minute later, 60 seconds later, the police show up and they question me. They ask me to describe the murderer because I am the only witness. And I'm sorry to say that murderer might actually get away because I cannot describe faces whatsoever. I cannot describe faces. I don't remember faces. I'll meet somebody and 10 minutes later, I'll forget what they look like. If you guys don't believe me, let's try it right now. Let's try it right now. Um, I have my iPad here. I'm gonna just... Uh, pull up a random image. Here we go. This is a random stock photo of a random guy. I'm gonna look at him for about five to 10 seconds. I'm gonna do my best to remember details about his face, his features, and I'm gonna try to describe him to you guys. All right, here we go. Try my best to take a mental picture. Um, okay, time's up, time's up. Okay, okay, here we go. I have a mental image. The police is asking me, please, Mr. Chan, describe the murderer. Here we go. Uh, Caucasian, um, brown hair, Dark brown hair, uh, nose, he has one, eyes, he's got them, he's got a mouth, he's, he's got um, stubbles, stubbles. He's kind of like not as pointy of a chin. That, again, that, that's basically all I can do. I, I, I'm serious, I'm not even playing around with you guys. That's all I can do. And I know they'll probably ask me questions like, can you describe his eyes and literally, if I'm trying to describe his eyes right now, he has them. That's all I can come up with. They're, you know, they're like that. I, I, I have no clue. Describe his nose. He's got a nose. I, what, what else can I say about a nose? I, anyway, let me know if you're just as bad as I am. And also let me know if you are a super recognizer. So today we covered a moving mummy. Our brains may be able to type soon. And just go ahead and commit crimes in front of me because I'll never remember your face. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. See ya.